we can see what's going on, everything's curving to the left. Is it the bar or is it the chain? Let's take a close look at each and find out. You can see how it was holding up. I can see this far left cut almost looks wavy, but it did favor an angle to the left. I was doing my best to keep it straight, but it didn't want to stay straight. It wanted to be the San Francisco chainsaw. So let's see if we can revert it back to the Great Northwest. Well, the chain is in pretty good shape. It's not too loose. The teeth look really good. Depth gauges look good. Appears to be of quality nature, but it looks pretty dang true. It looks pretty dang even as it sits. Well, the only thing I could read down here for sure is 3 8 We can confirm that using the gauge. When you find the right one, 3 8 the sprocket will point to the center of each spot. So we're centered here, we're centered here. None of the others will center like that. Quarter inch, you can see, you can center one and the other's off. 0.325, you can center one and the other's off. 3 8 is the only one that centers correctly. So that's how you can confirm it's a 3 8. The 3 8 pitch has to match the tip sprocket and the drive sprocket. Both sprockets need to be the same. This chain tells us it's a 3 8 pitch chain, but you can also use the gauge to confirm that. You can see we're right on the 3 8. I can see the sprocket's also a 3 8. Looks like everything matches. Use a groove scraper and make sure your bar is nice and clean. Too much crap in the bottom of the bar will push the chain up, which will cause it to ride real funky. Too much crap in the groove can be an issue. Some chains have a number on the depth gauge, which will tell you what the gauge is. I can't see any numbers on this, so we'll use our gauge to determine the gauge. We'll take a drive link. We'll start at the bottom, the 043, and it's not going to fit at all. The next one, 050, we got a pretty nice fit. Next one, 058. It goes on, but it's super sloppy. See all that slop in there? And obviously it's not 063, that's way too sloppy. So here we've determined 050 is the gauge of our chain. That's the gauge of the drive link that matches the groove in the bar. Well, all the numbers are worn off this bar, so we gotta use our gauge to check our bar gauge. We'll start with the smallest, 0.043, and it goes in real sloppy. There's a lot of play, a lot of slop. I can tell it's bigger than 043. Try the next one, 050. That drops in real nice. No slop at all. It still slides, but there's no slop. I can tell right there it's 050. Let's try the next two. 058, I have to force it down any farther past that. And now it's stuck. It got stuck in there. So it's smaller than 058. And of course that would mean it's definitely smaller than 063. Can't even really get that to go in. After you get the bar cleaned up, you can run your finger down it. And I can feel the groove. The very center is dished out even farther. It's valleyed like this real bad. Both of the rails are sloping down. They're not flat. You can feel that they're not flat. You can tell they're sloping in on both sides. When you take your square edge and look at it real close through the light, you can see how it's angled and valleyed. The angle needs to go away and the valley needs to go away. This isn't going to show up very well. But the center is sloping in real bad. In a certain spot you can see how the center illuminates a little bit more. Sometimes the valley down the middle of the bar can open up real wide. It can widen out real bad. If that happens you likely have bar damage. There is a roller that can clamp on and roll it back together and close the valley back to the right tolerance. But if this bar is that widened out you probably have bar damage and you probably need to replace the bar. I'd probably sell you a new bar before I rolled your bar back closed. Because if it widens out that bad, something's wrong. And you probably have permanent damage beyond what dressing's going to solve. You should fill the edge of it. Make sure there's not a big lip hanging over. If there's a big lip you can fill, then drag your file over it and it'll take off that lip. The lip is different from the valley widening. This is common to see. When the valley here widens out, it means you got an issue. You got bar damage and you should replace the bar at that point. There is a tool that utilizes a big bearing like this and clamps onto your bar and rolls it back in. A reason why the valley would widen out real bad could be because of the wrong size chain. Someone might have been using it with the wrong size chain and it wallered this out real bad. Another reason is the valley is too shallow. It might not accept the full depth of the drive link. It might be forcing it to ride high which is causing it to wobble and wallow the valley out. Several ways to dress a bar. You can take a file across it. I'm not going to make fun of you. Just make sure you get it flat. You could take your angle grinder across it. I'm not going to make fun of you. Just get it flat. 
You can use a bar dressing tool. It's intended to sit against the bar and stay nice and flat. Make sure you get it flat. That's what this is for. Let's take a look what I got going on here. We're going to make sure we're square. We're going to make sure we're square. Both of these are perfectly square. When your bar is this rough, this is a good option. Just make sure everything's square. I can see it's getting better already. Don't sand down your sprocket teeth. There's an issue with this fence. When you put the big bar against it, it hits the housing over here. We're gonna see if we can't modify this mount, deepen the groove a little bit, and move the fence forward a quarter inch. I was able to deepen the valley right here, and it now clears. tell but the left side was higher than the right side and the left side has been surfaced down real nice we got to do a little bit more till the right side becomes even with the left side you see that right side is shining up real nice see that right side nice and shiny but look at that left side that left side hasn't even been touched yet that left side still pitted burred dented but that right side is nice and shiny so that was definitely one of our issues this bar was nowhere near flat well that definitely brought the sexy back. Look at that. That's pretty. Pretty flat. And we'll finish with a few passes with the hand dresser. We're going to hit both sides and from both directions. It's got a real nice feel now. As I drag this across it, it's feeling really nice. We're back to a clean, smooth mirror finish. This is really nice. This should cut really well now. When I run my fingers down it, it feels real flat. That valley feeling is gone. That angled taper feeling is gone. Both sides feel really nice. Real smooth, real flat. I can't feel any imperfections. Before this was full of pits and grooves. I could feel the valley. I could feel an angle. All of that is gone now. This is really nice. This is in great shape. We're going to redo our square test. Wow. First thing I notice is when it goes on, it sits real square and snug. Before, it was hard to find square. It was just sloppy. That's because this wasn't even close to flat. Now that this is flat and this is flat, the square sits on really nice. Try to get some light back here. You won't see that through the camera, but that is a lot better. I can see from this side that it actually sits square and flat. Here's another bar that's real bad. Just by looking at it down here, I can tell it is not flat. It literally rides like this. The angle is very obvious. This bar has never been flipped. Hopefully you can see that gap through the camera. The side with the square is sitting flush, but the other side's got a huge gap. Hopefully the light, right there, you can see the light coming through on that one side rail. One rail's touching, one rail's got a huge gap.
parallel. That's really nice. That cut really straight. Not only did it cut straight, it cut easy with low effort. I didn't have to shove the bar down into the wood to get it to cut. It just walked straight through like a saw should. Huge improvement dressing the bar. Wow, very nice. Boy, that cut really well. Smooth, straight, flat, no forcing or shoving. It just cut right through, nice and straight, just like it should. This is like a brand new bar now. Both of these bars are in great shape. Well, here's the comparison the dress bar cut on the right that nice little slab on the right and then the angled slab right next to it on the left side angled slab is undressed bar the nice thin consistent cut is a dress bar I can't even get the saw to slide through the other cuts just a few inches in is all you can go you saw in that other one after I made the cut down you could slide the bar straight through 90 degrees you can't slide the bar through 90 degrees on these other cuts and that's due to the undressed bar cutting curved cuts, making it real crooked inside there. If your bar's not dressed right, you'll never cut straight. Bar repair can almost be looked at like an oxymoron. Number one, I can sell you an aftermarket bar for less than 20 bucks. And number two, it should be looked at like preventative maintenance. Think of it like the chain. You don't let your chain get so dull that it'll no longer cut. So don't let your bar get so bad that performance is lost. Every few sharpenings, Flip the bar and run a few passes with the dresser down the bar. And that way you'll never have to do bar repair. This model has the onboard tensioner and this labor crew didn't even know you could flip the bar on this. The cheap cost of an aftermarket bar is where the belt sander comes in. You can set up the belt sander and knock out a couple of these at the same time. It's fast and accurate. And as long as you knock out a couple at the same time, you're going to be alright. Otherwise, just throw a new bar on it. Whether aftermarket or OEM, one more bar will probably outlast the saw.